know very clearly. And I've come to Hadley Castle in Essex, a site that I've investigated a few years ago. Now when I came before I didn't actually experience anything paranormal, however there are a number of ghostly legends attached to the site and ghost hunters from all over the country still come here to this day and claim that there are still supernatural events occurring here. On top of a normal investigation I'd also like to try something a little bit different and that is do some experiments with the PSB7 spirit box. Now for those of you who don't know, spirit boxes and ghost boxes are experimental pieces of equipment. Most people believe that they're used to communicate with ghosts and spirits. Um, however, they do rely on radio frequencies. And it's more than likely that all these voices are that people are picking up are indeed radio transmissions. So I've got a few tests I'd like to try tonight just to get to the bottom of whether the spirit box can actually be used for spirit communication or whether it is just... Uh, radio transmissions coming through. The crumbling ruins of Hadley Castle sit silently in the Essex countryside overlooking the Thames estuary. Originally built by Hubert de Burr in the 13th century, the castle was used by many royals over the following centuries as a personal retreat due to its close proximity to London. In 1544, the estate was broken up and sold off to Lord Richard Rich, who subsequently dismantled much of the castle for the value of its stone, and the building has been left to ruin ever since. It's believed that in the 19th century, smugglers used hidden caverns in the castle to hide their stolen goods, and it was around this time that one of the castle's most famous ghosts made its first appearance. Legend tells of a lady in white who once attacked a milkmaid on her milk round early one morning. Since then, many people claim to have also seen the lady in white. Now I do wonder if maybe this story and legend was concocted by the smugglers in a way to scare people away from their hidden loot and really just to keep people away from the area. Throughout the 20th and 21st century, many visitors to the castle ruin claim to have encountered the woman in white and most who do so describe an overwhelming sense of evil whilst in her presence. The ghostly voice of a woman talking has also been experienced by visitors as well as a large black dog with glowing red eyes that seems to resemble the well-known black shuck that has appeared in East Anglian folklore for hundreds of years. So I thought I'd give you a little tour around the castle grounds at the moment. Um, the biggest problem we've got here in the whole day of filming is the sound obviously. It is incredibly windy. Um, it's right on the top of sort of a hill, it looks over. <laughs> As I was saying, it's incredibly windy. It's right on top of a hill and looks over onto the Thames estuary, so the wind just completely whips up here. Um, although I haven't said that you can see why they built a castle here because one, it would look amazing up on the top of this hill for everyone else and two, you've got a huge range of views so both um, for the, uh, both, <laughs> both for a defensive position and a uh, status position it's a fantastic place to build a castle. Um, there aren't many ruins left at the moment um, but what they are, they are, are fantastic. It does give you an insight into how big the castle would have been and the kind of architecture that would have been here. So we're going to take a walk down here where I know there is a, um, another part of the ruin down here. A little bit hidden away. 
and you can tell straight away as soon as we're down into this little grove here the wind drops and it's uh might be worth doing some stuff down here tonight the other thing we've noticed today is there's been an awful lot of dog walkers about and people taking walks in the park and everything so it's uh it's a well used and looked after site um which is nice it's nice it's not just all been left to ruin and it's derelict but with the sheer amount of people that come here you think maybe there'd be a few more ghost sightings than uh, than have been reported so you know who knows um i think a lot of the sightings are merely legend um rather than based on any fact but you know it is an old place um it's been used for a long time so there may you know there may still be some kind of energies lurking about here so the castle stretches right down here. He's um, guessing another another bit of the wall. Um, interestingly enough, you can sort of see the kind of material they would have made it out of. You can see um, some some seashells in there within the concrete. So it's you know they've they've obviously used a certain type, taken use of what they've got around them, which is the Thames. Hence, there's a lot of seashells and stuff like that within the concrete. Yeah, it's just a sort of nice little caverny cave bit. It's, it's a lovely place, it really is. When there's a noisy train line going past, you've got aeroplanes going over constantly. But other than that, it's a lovely, lovely little area. Um, aside from the ghost stories, you know, it's an interesting place. Um, so I think what we're going to do, we're going to go and get some dinner, something warm to drink, and then we're going to come back and uh, start off with the spirit box experiments and see what we can get later. So we've just come back at night to the castle grounds at the moment and it's pretty much exactly the same as it was during the day. Very windy, uh, there's still sounds of trains going past and aeroplanes going overhead so it's a very very noisy one. I'm going to do my best to try and, you know, at least get some audio over, over to you. I'm uh, going to start off by doing the spirit box experiment. Um, so I'm going to get that out of the bag now, set that up and I'll run you through what I'm actually going to do to try and test it. I've seen countless people use the spirit box in an unregulated way. They turn up to a location and start sweeping through, taking no notice of any man-made radio transmissions that may be mistaken for spirit voices. My plan is to take notes for any real radio stations, meaning that the remaining voices coming through are left as unexplained, and without further investigation, even then we can't label them as paranormal. Sadly, as with the rest of this investigation, the wind has been a huge problem and it unfortunately persisted throughout the night, so we've subtitled some of the more affected parts of the audio. Okay. We'll start with the aerial pulled up. You've got five minutes to get your entry in. It's already picking up uh, the radio stations, which just goes to prove it is a lot of radio coming through. We are in near London, so there's a lot of radio noise. Yeah. So we can't really work with this. Because we know that is all radio coming through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the aerial down. And you see it automatically goes a lot, lot quieter. We're just going to wait and see if we get anything through and at what frequency it comes through at. We can then mark that as a radio station. We tried to perform the spirit box test as best we could, but due to the extremely high winds, it proved almost impossible, so we decided to change position and move into one of the remaining towers in hopes of some shelter. So it's a little bit more sheltered in this bit. Um, it sort of acts like a vortex in a way, there's just wind rushing around inside, but it's a little bit more sheltered than, than out there. Um, so yeah, so I'm 
places in the Supreme Court to check for evidence. Um, for the simple fact that if it's moving about, if it's hobbling, you're moving it about, it may pick up different stations, different frequencies, depending on where you're moving. Um, and when we was walking over to this area, I said to Marcus, who's on camera, I said, like, people would, all that noise we had coming through earlier, people would listen to that and say that it's spirit voices coming through. Because there's so much radio noise in this particular area. Um, I think because it's quite high up as well, it picks up a lot of it. Um, so you just can't rely on it. But I, I want to kind of document and prove this idea that I've got, uh, which is what I'm going to try and do now. Okay, so we've got 103. We're going to wait for 103 to come up on here. And then we'll do the radio train as we come through. Wait for it. And. It wasn't that time. 101. There. 98. There. Uh, 96. There. 93. Coming up. Now. We've got 89 coming up soon. Yeah. It's, it's that easy. It's honestly, there's like nothing to it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt for now. We kind of know now what sorts of noises to expect coming through. Um, we've heard what the radio transmission sound like, so I'm gonna ask some questions. And we're gonna see if we can get anything that's maybe a little bit more now. Um, comes through, or maybe some very, very clear words. I'm very doubtful, we've got to be very critical when looking at it. Um, but I think that's the next step. Just if, if anyone disagrees with me at the moment, yeah. I will do it the way that they normally do it. So, here we go. Yeah. Say hello. Say hello very clearly. Very clearly. What we just received through the spirit box could be perceived by many people as a voice saying hello. However, during this session, I continued to look back at the screen, and the only voices or sounds that came through were where known radio transmissions were. Say hello very clearly. Very that's 96, I'm really keeping an eye on this and it's going through all the transmissions. Rip. You need to hear hello very clearly to let us know you're here. As well as the spirit box test, we had also planned on doing a full night's investigation of Hadley Castle, but unfortunately again due to the high winds this was near impossible, so we decided to end the night there. Since the investigation at Hadley Castle, I've actually gone out twice more to two separate locations to test the spirit box again. 
and both times I came back with the same results. Um, I didn't have anything strange come through. All that I was picking up were radio transmissions, um, which to me says that the vast majority of stuff that does come through on these devices and similar uh, devices as well are radio transmissions, nothing unusual, nothing strange about them. Now, I don't want to dismiss the spirit box entirely just based on these three investigations. I think there could potentially be something to it. There's been numerous reports over the years of people experiencing strange things and strange uh, feedback and interaction through radios um, and, and various other similar devices. So I think that if used correctly, um, they, they could be used for communication. Now, I have to say as well, after using it for, for this purpose, I think the best way would be to sit it down, not have it scanning through and just stay static on one particular station because then all you're doing is eliminating the vast majority of outside noise coming through. And I don't think having it scanned through really would, would benefit in any way because if there is any voices or, or, or sounds coming from an unknown source, why would they be coming through on different, different radio frequencies? They would be coming through on one particular source or one frequency. So I think, I think that is the best way to go about it. Due to how complicated it is to, to set the spirit box up properly and to have it scanning through and actually mark each individual radio station, I think this is the way that if we do use it in the future that we'll, we'll go about it. We will sit it down, we'll have it on one frequency, just static and see if anything comes through that we can't explain. And even if something does come through, we've then got to try and look at where this particular transmission comes from. You can't say straight away that it's uh, it's something supernatural or anything like that. You've got to look deeper into it. And I think that's the problem that a lot of people have when using the, uh, devices such as this, is that they jump at conclusions straight away, not looking into anything deeper.